it's Tracy here from Mini Scenes again. Right, something different now. This is some of the first things I started to make when my craft started to sell. Um, the little ponds and waterfalls that I make for model railways and the like. Just wanted to share this with you. This is a homemade mould. I made the original. Then I spent a lot of money on silicon, learning to make moulds. And I ended up with this and a load of bigger versions. There we go. There's one little pond. Now, obviously, that is bare plaster. Still slightly soft as well. When he poured this earlier this afternoon. So I will be leaving it overnight to finish. But that will be a little pond. The plaster I use is Herculite plaster, which is a really sort of good commercial grade plaster. I buy it in big buckets. So this is our kind of starting point. Um, the bigger ponds I do, yes, I've got whopping big moulds for those. Uh, that I had to use like full size buckets as the um, yeah the housing for the mould as I made it with silicon. It can cost an awful lot in silicon to make this sort of mould. But once you've got it, you've got it. You've just got to be quite meticulous about how you make your original. So there we go. I'm going to let that air um, for a while. This is actually for a proper customer order, so I will be cracking on with this uh, tomorrow and uh, you can see how we go from there. The only other tools we're going to need well, there are uh, paints and some resin and some uh, green scatter, green, uh, bushy type stuff, all the model railway landscaping materials. And also we need to make the water, so that will be resin and some of the Woodland Scenics Realistic Water, I think that's what it's called, Water Effects. I'll get the bottle out and show you to make the actual water falling off there into this pond. So that's what we'll be doing when it's all settled down and dried. So, here we go. I'm going to leave it overnight to dry. Here we go then. We have got a little rock demoulded all nice and dry. When I get to putting the colour on, I will zoom you in further. But right now, I just wanted to show you what I'm mixing up. Excuse all the glitter everywhere. Uh, I've been having a very messy, glittery crafting few days. What I've got is some acrylics mixed up um, with some water. Uh, they're all like kind of different earthy colours. And then there's the black. Now, we need them really watery. I've just tested the black and it's too too thick still and the reason we want this very watery is plaster takes colours in a really odd way it um, kind of absorbs it into all the cracks and things which is a really useful trick uh, it works really well with this sort of technique but I am going to dilute them a little bit more there we go and get a tissue ready So, yeah, that's about right. You only want like the lightest wash of a colour, um, and with these we only want a tiny little bit as well, just to add a little bit of depth into the colour. So, let me zoom you in. This is going to look really rubbish. Be warned, it will. It'll look really rubbish until the last coat goes on and then it dries. There we go. Okay, hopefully, hoping you can see. Oh dear, trying to get it nice and central. Yeah, so it will look quite rubbish until the last coat goes on. But these are just to give it a little bit of, you know, rocks just aren't, bl aren't just black and grey, are they? Don't forget your pond bottom too. Okay, so there's a little bit of that colour. Moving on to the next one. Again, just a little bit. Can you see this colour is really subtle? It'll barely show through the black. On to the third one. 
this is so tiny I mean on a bigger piece I would use a sponge brush to put it on but this little rocky thing is so tiny that I'm trying to be a little bit more careful where I put the colours I will put a bit of colour around the back here too this is the bit you're not going to see but I will put a little bit of colour just to make it look a bit more finished really but you can see how it just absorbs straight into the plaster it's worth experimenting um, with plaster that's although hardened is still wet still sort of got a dampness to it like only just come out of the mould because again that gives you yet another different effect like drying my brush so what we've got here then you see you've got a bit of a mottled effect different colours now this is the bit where I'm hoping that my black is now watery enough Put a little drop more water there we are that should do it yeah probably would have got away with it being a bit darker actually but can you see how it's going into all the crevices how it's absorbing in and that's why plaster moulds for scenery work you can also carve plaster tend to do a little bit of that when I'm trying to get the pieces to fit nicely together when I'm making these sort of things you know when I'm making the originals I just think this bit's like watching magic yeah I probably could have got away with that being a little bit darker that's fine because what you can do is build it up so best to, better to go in a bit light first really you can always add more if you did go too dark what you can do is get some white and kind of dry brush over the top that's the subject of a whole other video sometime I guess just uh, talk amongst yourselves while I do this But you can see how the black is taking into the shapes of the mould. Put a little bit of the black on the back as well. And of course, this is acrylic paint, so it dries very quickly anyway, but um, plaster just absorbs the moisture so fast. Um, that it disappears very very quickly but it's still in there it's still in the um, in the plaster it's just absorbed in so I you know you have to remember you still do need to leave this somewhere to dry I have been known to pop them on top of radiators But yeah, I always think this is I really do think this look this is like watching magic, isn't it? I remember when I first saw somebody from Woodland Scenics demonstrating this up at the Wally Model Railway Model Railway exhibition. Um and I was absolutely blown away by it. So I now have pretty much every mould that Woodland Scenics make. And that's what I use to make all the little bits that I then put together to make one of these. Now, what we're going to need in the bottom is, like in the bottom of the water, is some really dark. And probably under here too. So I'm going in with an extra layer there. Don't worry if you get any weird white bits that the bit that the paint won't take to like that to where something funny has happened with the plaster <laughs> but don't forget you're going to be sticking a load of greenery in here so it really doesn't matter right out of my little bottle of diluted acrylic I'm going to put in a bit of 
proper dark which I'm going to mix around like that because that is going to be the bottom of our pond. It'll get darker than that because I'm going to put like all gravel in. Yes it'll be real gravel in the bottom too. But that's going to give it some sort of feeling of depth to where the water goes. Okay, I'm going to leave that to plenty of time to dry. Then all we've got to do is the greenery and of course the water, which is the bit that most people get a bit stuck on. So we'll see how we get on with with that. Could have done with it a bit darker under there. I'll do that with the gravel. Right, so I'm going to leave that for an hour just to let it dry off properly and we'll come back and put the green on. Right, back again. You can see how the uh, paint has taken into the rocks and given it quite a rock-like appearance. We can always give a bit more colour if we want, but I think that looks pretty good. So it's time for the greenery. What we've got to stick it on with, let's just steam you back out of it, is some very thick PVA, as it says there. <laughs> Uh, my other half gets this for various uh, painting and decorating uses and I just nick a big dollop every so often and pop it in a little pot like that. I find it very good to, to use because it's like the extra strong, you know, extra tacky PVA that you spend a fortune on whereas Mark buys it in whopping big tubs so it doesn't cost me, well, anything if I nick it off him but he doesn't miss this amount. <laughs> Yeah, it's not going to be uh, not going to be a problem. Right, I've also got then a big box of the green stuff that you make bushes and things with. There's all colours in here. I just keep chucking it in. Whenever I, every so often, I buy a bag and just lob it in, so you get quite a variety. Now, what we're going to do is just take a thick PVA, and for a start, let's go around the edges. like so. Now what I'm going to put here I think actually, yeah I'll put some of my grass mix to get it started. You see I'm starting to, I'm going in between the rocks a little bit too. There we go. I'm just going to get the other tub. Here we go. Now this is my own mix of grass in inverted commas. So again, I just chuck some more in every so often. There's lots of different colours in here. Um, some quite coarse ones as well. Little bits of grit, there's all sorts. Gives it quite a nice natural mix. So, let me just tip the camera up, because I'm going to do this over here. Going to just do a little bit of sprinkle. And that's why I'm doing it over there. So, we've got some grass. That's that bit done. Now, back to the bushes. Zoom in a little bit more. So, this is starting to look more like scenery, isn't it? Now, there are some gaps where, when I pour the resin in to make the pond, I know that the resin will escape. <laughs> Quite obviously, there's gaps here and there. So, I'm stuffing those full of the PVA. And obviously I'm going to put a bit of a, a bit of bush there, so in all the joins, to stop it leaking out. Sorry, I think I keep going off camera. There we are. And we've got a nice big bush there. So plenty of the PVA. Um, let's have... Yeah, we've got a bit of greenery that's going to go up there, and let's have a little bit on the top as well. And let's bring it into the water a bit there. So, that's where they... Put my brush in some water. That's where the bushes are going to go. So, then we just literally stick it in. Oh, put my little pot out of the way, otherwise it'll end up full of greenery. because we've got different colours of green going in here it's uh, you know hopefully it should look quite natural I 
you're going with it all too bright like that bit it'll look really strange so for the natural look mix up your colors a bit a little bit on the top there only a little bit there so there's our bushes it's as simple as that Now what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm pushing it all in, make sure it's all pressed down. Then again, I'm going to leave it ooh, an hour or so, I would say. Um, probably longer. I'll wait until all the bits of PVA that you can still see have gone completely clear. That's a good sign that it's, it's cured. And then I'll shake off any loose stuff, because you see there will be some loose stuff. And then we'll go in with the water okay so back in about an hour right next stage as i said we'll shake off just doing it to the side any loose bits of the greenery that all seems to have stuck fairly well it's only been about an hour that pva does dry pretty quickly especially as like the paint it uh, absorbs into the into the uh, plaster Right, next stage is then, we have a couple of things to put in. We have this to make some water with. It comes from Woodland Scenics. Uh, you get a lot of use out of a bottle like that size. As you can see, it's not cheap stuff, but it's really good. We also have some of these. These are little strips of water from my mini scenes store. Uh, I haven't actually got them listed at the moment, but if there's enough interest, I will in my eBay shop. The other things we're going to need are some resin for the pond. And um, I'm going to use UV resin for speed with this one, just to, so as I can show you quickly. Normally I would use epoxy, but really I think you can use either. It's not too much of an issue. So what I've got then... I'm trying to find some gravel that's about the right colour for the rocks. And in this box, as you can see, there's lots of different colours. And that is because I am going to add a bit more rockiness. So you can see how close the colours are to real stones. I want a little bit of graveliness at the back there. It's a bit light, really. But it will do. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Might use a, a bit of this as well. This is called Rough Terrain, and it's from um, <coughs> excuse me, it's from a firm called Serious Play. I see, let's grade that down a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, there's all sorts of bits of yeah. You can imagine that there's even bits of greenery in that. Um, it does look like rough terrain if you chuck it down. It very much does what it says on the tin. That one. And finally, that water isn't going to look deep enough unless I put a bit more something dark in it. So I've got a little bit of black scatter that is sold for being tarmac on model railway roads. That looks grey at the moment. It will go blacker. And the resin gets on it. So let's put the resin in first. I've got an ultraviolet lamp standing by ready to zap the resin. So this is how we get our standing water in the pool at the bottom. Oops, took the wrong top off. Uh -uh. That's what I wanted to do. Here we are. I'm just going to pour a bit in. I want a little bit of depth to it, but don't want to go too crazy. Because otherwise it will run out everywhere. But yeah, a bit of depth. Let's cover those rocks a little bit. That'll do. I'm going to leave that to settle. So I don't tend to use gloves when I'm using ultraviolet resin, probably should, but I've never had any issues with it other than getting it on my skin when um, 
<laughs> and then when I zap it with a, an ultraviolet light, I burn my fingers. Now you see that probably that that is um, self-leveling. And it's had a few seconds, so let's give it a zap. A couple of bubbles coming up in it. Don't really care. It's meant to be water. Water has bubbles. Now this normally takes a couple of minutes to cure, but ah, that's hot. That is a very high powered lamp. I'll put the links for the lamp and for the resin and the plaster, that's Herculite. Um, the green stuff is mostly from Woodland Scenics, so I'll, I'll link all that as well for you in the description below. Right, now the waterfall. This stuff is the is water effect, as it's called. And what it does is it's a bit like PVA. It's thick, gloopy stuff that dries clear. So I tend to put a bit on the top like that, as if it's coming over the top. And then we can attach a little bit of the mini scenes waterfall. Now we're not going to need all that. It's a tiny little waterfall. So this stuff just tears and the remainder can be stuck back on the sheet. So we decide what's the top. I would say that's gonna be the top. And we stick it on like so. Simple as that. Now when that dries, that white at the top will go clear. And then all we'll need to do is put some little touches of white paint into the water here just to and to make like a little splash effect at the bottom and that'll be it we're ready to go off to its new home this one has actually been sold already um i do tend to make these to order rather than try and store them because i don't want them to get damaged in storage so there we go i'll be back um it'll probably take 24 hours for that to that white to go clear so I'll be back in, uh, in, well, probably we'll see tomorrow what it looks like in the morning. And that's that for now. There we go. Right, see you tomorrow. Right, back again. This is, uh, it's almost cured white now. Uh, the white's nearly gone. So it's starting to go clear. I'm going to touch in some of the white now. Um, you can see it still looks quite opaque on the video camera but it's not actually it's quite clear in my eyes so what I'm going to do is I'll touch in a bit of white now and then in the morning yeah probably uh yeah it'll have cleared completely by then I would say so I can then uh, take some photos for you but this is all we do now because bear in mind this water in inverted commas is all going to dry completely clear so, and what you want is a little bit of a, you know, like the water's frothing as it falls, that sort of thing. As you can see, I'm just putting a little bit of white paint here and there. And in the water, on the, the bottom, you want some splashes. So, just a little bit like that. And I usually soften that by patting it with my finger. That is it. I'll do some photos, as I said, so you can see what the finished result looks like. Um, yeah, it's hard to get your head around what that water's going to look like until it's completely cured. But there you go. Now you see how tiny that is? That's suitable for tea gauge, even. Um, it could be like a massive lake for tea gauge. That's 1 to 450 for anybody who doesn't know. Um, it's a nice scale for, for N scale, I would say. That'd be like a nice little bit of countryside. Up to double O or even doll's hair scale. You're talking a little pond. <laughs> there you are. So yes, I'll take a couple of photos when that's what that white has cleared properly so you can see what's really going on with the white paint. That's just acrylics, by the way. 
there we go well thank you very much for watching um those of you who haven't subscribed yet please do click, click the subscribe button and the little bell below as then you'll be notified when i'm making another video those who have already subscribed thank you so much i really do appreciate your support my channel's starting to grow nicely and it's all thanks to you so hugs all round and uh, enjoy your crafting